Hey guys, welcome to No Tux Allowed. And uh, Big Pod, did you just hear that? Hear what? Did you just hear that? I heard the bass drop in our intro music. <laughs> yep. It's almost like that's what that entire track is, just a bunch of bass drops. So, whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, I am your host, Josh. And uh, I'll, and I have a confession to make. I, I use Gen 2, by the way. <laughs> And uh, I've got this other guy here, uh, Big Pod. He is still a <clears throat> gnome boy running that uh, atomic thing, I think. Um, Who knows what it is? Ra- you're wrong. I've been slamming it on KD for the past couple of weeks. That's not gnome. Yeah, I know. Why that's, why I said, that's, that's why I said you're wrong. I'm trying to do like a... KD challenge, sort of. 30 days of KD. Oh, is it because I, is, is it because I ran K- KD for 30 days? No, it's because... So now you gotta run KD for 30 days? It's because I need to need to try it, not just hate on it. And I, okay. honestly, I think, I think it deserves everything I give it. It is usable, but that's about it. <laughs> With a bit of polish and... Maybe, maybe of removal of uh, th- th- three thirds of the th- th- three quarter of options, or hiding them in an advanced menus, it would make a passable desktop environment. But it would still need to work better for it actually be good one. For example, I... SSDM should probably be replaced by something better. And in general, things just aren't up to the, my standard, which is GNOME, which is better. Well, you see, speaking of GNOME, uh, they came out with a very interesting report here earlier this week. Really? And uh, they have posted an update from the board, and uh, GNOME might have uh, spent a little bit too much money for what they got. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, uh, well, it's not all bad. It's not all bad, actually. Uh, so, for to explain to everybody, uh, the, GNOME, the GNOME Foundation uh, set an annual budget. And uh, they have done an awful lot this year, uh, you know, with, ho- with hosting events, sending developers to travel to d- various different places across the world. And uh, they spent a little bit too much money and they didn't really get a huge donation this time around like they have in the past. So, uh, basically, they're just saying that uh, revenue wasn't exactly what they were, what wasn't what they were uh, expecting it to be. It just didn't meet their projections. Uh, so, as a result, they had to they they had to cut back a little bit a little bit on a few people. Uh, this is mostly just foundation staff. These aren't developers that are being affected at yeah. all. So. Uh, it turns out that uh, the foundation team is also really, really small. It was only like six people. So now they got four people. Uh, or do you mean three people because they don't have a leader? That th- that too. Which uh, I found pretty interesting. It's like how much... Are, uh, the, uh, they don't really like are talking about numbers. Uh, they said that that'll, be, that that'll be coming out later. So maybe we get to figure out like uh, how much some of these people are making. Because uh, GNOME is actually fairly well funded compared to other desktop environments. Yeah. But uh, also a lot of that investment is also steered towards like uh, their infrastructure costs, like no- the uh, Flat Hub, uh, the GNOME GitLab instance, the their... Uh... Wait, the Flat Hub is hosted by GNOME Foundation? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Oh. Well, I, now you know. I knew there was a connection, but didn't think it was like they, they did it. Yeah, uh, Flathub is actually owned and, mainta- and maintained by the GNOME Foundation. Okay, good. Yeah. So it has it, staying power. <laughs> yeah, it has staying power, that and uh, which is a good thing, because, you know, uh, Flathub, uh, not that long ago, reported that uh, it's it's... Deals with a lot of network traffic and uh, yeah. big pod, uh, like you, like I constantly say on the show. Uh, there's going to be a common point where you know those tra- those network transfer fees are going to come to bite us. 
Yeah. And uh, that's what Flathub had to go through fairly recently yep. when, you know, they they hit uh, two billion connections. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that was actually a few months ago that that happened. But, you know, Flathub, of course, uh, was able to conti- keep the course. And uh, it seems like, uh, actually, speaking of which, the Flathub, the Flathub uh, CDN seems to be getting getting better because uh, there was a period of time there where it was just really slow for me to download packages from Flathub. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't noticed that as of late. So uh, maybe uh, they've had some improvements coming in through there. But anyways, uh, it's not like the GNOME Foundation is broke. Uh, what it is that every year they 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 set a specific uh, amount of uh, fun of funding that they that that they have to store in the bank, so yeah. that way if say they lose they lose all revenue they can still they can still you know pay to uh run gnome. So uh they they didn't they didn't have to dip into those funds at all and they were able to uh, re outline a uh, budget to to uh, be able to last out the rest of the year and as well as to go into uh, next year as well. So good. Uh, hopefully uh, donations can pick up, pick, pick back up and we can continue seeing Gnome uh, uh, be able to be fully fun and, you know, uh, keep, keep some people in, keep some people working in there, even though, you know, some of those developers are a little shaky in the email, in the email threads, or, you know, might be a little bit too opinionated at times, but, it's free and open source software. If you don't have an opinion, what are you doing? <laughs> yep. So uh, that's like uh, not the biggest story of the week, though, Big Pod, because uh, there is some bigger news. Really? Yes, and it it all comes from, uh, of course, uh, Google, of all places. Uh, they have uh, been the subject to not just uh, you know a monopoly lawsuit, but uh, there's this also lawsuit that's been going on for a couple of years now with Epic Games. Oh, yeah, those where, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. So of course we're talking about video games again, but uh, so a, a few years ago, Epic Games decided they were going to uh, change the in in store uh, cash shop for Fortnite to hmm. use their own payment service. Oh, which was a violation of not just Apple's policies, because, you know, in Apple land, you have to go if you're going to be spending money in Apple land, uh, Apple wants a cut of it. So uh, you have to use the Apple payment service. Yeah. Well, Google also had a payment service. And I don't remember if it was actually a hard requirement, but it was definitely much easier to use the Google the Google service than it was uh, to implement your own thing. Well, Epic Epic decided that we're going to have some issues with that, and uh, it kind of spiraled to the point where uh, the idea of third-party app stores uh, coming into question for uh, these platforms, and Android has always been a little bit more open than iOS has when it comes to like installing uh, separate application stores. Like uh, This Samsung phone that I have right now has four different app stores on it. Not by choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, they've never actually, but Google has never allowed application stores to be distributed through, uh, Google's Play Store, or, uh, whatever they're calling it now. But, anyways, uh, the court has made a ruling that said that in, in three years' time, Google must allow, uh, third-party app stores to be listed on Google Play. Oh, which so this means this will take like three years to implement. Well, uh, they have three years. Uh, well, they have to get this enabled within three years to have the services on there, and then there's another three years where they ha- where uh, Google can't remove them or something like that. Hmm. Which immediately like comes to question of uh, if you. If uh, these third-party app stores come in, how are they going to hit the hit the road running? Well, uh, there's a couple big app stores that you can install on Android that you that you may or may not have encountered uh, in in your time that are pretty popular. Two of which are come pre-installed as the default preference for your hardware. That is the Samsung app application store 
and that is the Amazon application store. Yep. Both of those are very big because Samsung devices and Kindle. Now, uh, is there going to be a third option? Well, F-Droid is fairly common, even from like the more normal people that don't really like uh, go out and try to find find like open source stuff to install, install because, you know, there's a lot of cool projects on F-Droid. <clears throat> And, of course, uh, you've also got places like uh, the Aurora App Store and uh, so on. Yeah. But uh, the biggest ruling that this judge has pushed out is that uh, these third-party app stores would also be able to install applications through the Google Play Store, too. Hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And which I thought was pretty cool. Now, of course... Google's not going to go down without a fight. Uh, they, they've already announced that they plan to to appeal this decision. So, uh, it's, of course. We're, uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on that one. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's pretty neat. Like, uh, you know, on Android, we could already install these app stores. And now it's even potentially easier to install them than yep. before. <clears throat> yep. Not that... Not that it was hard, but, you know, it was definitely a bit more inconvenient. And uh, let the App Store Wars begin, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, Big Pod, I know you're also a Windows fanboy. I wouldn't say fanboy, but I use it. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever had to mount and deal with an NTFS partition on a Linux system? If you watched my interview with Brody... Uh, on his his podcast Tech Over T, you know that I did, and I and I did for a long time use NTFS drive on a Linux system. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that you absolutely loved uh, dealing with a permissionless file file system uh, that uh, at times can only be mounted read only. Not for but... I, I always had had. Uh, ability to mount it read write and then didn't care about the permission because I was the only one who used the system. So ah, it all okay. worked. Well I'm certain that there's somebody that fell in love with that, but uh yeah. there's there's some good news coming for you. Uh the NTFS v- uh three driver has been merged into kernel six point twelve. Really? Yes. Now uh this is interesting because we are very close to the merge window. Uh, as in, at the time of our recording, it, the merge window is closed in one week. <laughs> and uh, so there's not a lot of people pushing a lot of code right now. It's mostly just like uh, some minor fixes, minor tweaks, or an oops, I kind of forgot to uh, uncomment this line kind of kind of deal. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, this was also a pretty big patch and uh we i believe we've spoken recently uh in regards to uh linus having some opinions on large uh patches and merge requests yeah and of course uh, linus the, linus had the comment the what was it called big cash of fast story which is still evolving by the way so <laughs> when that gets to its final conclusion we will make sure to let you know I am certain uh, it, it it's definitely just click on that link there in in the uh, last episode. I think it was uh, two episodes ago. Uh, I I remember the title uh, of the episode being whining about Bcash FS on mono. It might have been a bit more than two episodes. It might have been four. Might have been four, but uh, you know, click the link in that description. Find that email thread. Keep following it. It get yeah. It it's a it's interesting. Uh, if anything, it's really just a. Uh, just a little fun side story, but uh, of course Linus had to had to leave a comment on this one, where he says specifically, "The bulk of this really should not come in during the merge window." I pulled it though because NTFS v three, but but still. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know he he wasn't too happy about this, but you know uh, the 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 uh, guys at Paragon Software aren't near, being nearly as aggressive as uh, some other developers when it comes to file systems. Yeah. So, it's been merged, and uh, this is uh, support for 
and it comes with uh, some support for F allocate for uh, compressed files, uh, so some support for NTFS uh, compression uh, attributes. Uh, right, it, it optimizes a few uh, large writes uh, to sparse files, so lots of little files everywhere that you're writing a lot of data to. Which, uh, you know, it, it's nice to see just those little improvements. I also hear that there's some massive performance improvements, too. Uh, but uh, I'm I not... Bet. I don't really use NTFS, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Big Pod, I know this is your favorite story that's coming up right next here. Because, you know, we love talking about DNS. Yep. So, uh, what's going on here with uh, the .io domain? Do you know? Yeah. So, uh, on October 3rd, the British government announced that it will be giving up sovereignty over the, uh, a tropical atoll of Chagos Islands, which is found in the Indian Ocean. Uh, it will be handed over to a neighboring island country of Mauritius, and yeah, which means that because Chagos Island, the, the this territory owned the IO domain because they were officially named British Indian Ocean Territory, that's why IO, uh, the IO domain will have to go because normally two letter domains are kind of just for countries because they are CCTLDs, as in country code top level domains. And there are many, many domains that you know of that have the IO TLD, GitHub IO, GHCR IO, after all, each IO, and many others. So Google I.O. is a conference. Yeah, they they <laughs> also use I.O. domain, of yeah. course. Google.io, so for their conference. And yes, this will mean that uh, if, if they do not make a special exception in sooner or later, it will have to actually... Uh, the INA, it's international something, something, something. The Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. Okay, that. IANA. Yeah. Will, which creates and delegates the top level domains, will basically go and s stop selling the domain, or they will tell the those who do sell it that they cannot sell it anymore. And they won't allow any new registrations of an IO domain, which also means that sooner or later all the existing ones will be retired because they won't be able to extend them. But there is no actual number that we know of of IO domains because you know it's it turns out the DNS is federated. <laughs> yeah, there is a huge number of them. It's... We could probably count them, but let's just say we're talking about uh, the same. We're talking about between one and the same number that you find uh, six, six, uh, uh, six by power of twenty-four, six sixty-four by power of twenty-four. I believe it's the. It's the act, or actually 54, or the 34. Basically a lot. A lot of different combinations, because I believe 64 is the maximum number of characters in a host name, or si single portion of a host name. Or uh, it, which I believe depends on a domain, but that's standard, I believe. Which means you have 35 different characters if we go that uh, we are... Uh, agnostic to upper and lower case letters so 64 or it's now it's 35 by the power of 64 yes or no 
It's been a while since I've been doing that that kind of calculation. Either way, it's a lot of names. <laughs> a lot of host names, yes. So somewhere between one and a fuck ton. Yeah, so... I think it's uh, appropriate <laughs> word. I'm going to have a link to uh, the, the article that I discovered this on. And uh, this article is actually <coughs> fascinating because it talks about, like, this happening before in a yeah. historical context. Because... Uh, uh, the the biggest prime example that it it mentions that I thought was kind of hilarious was dot su. Do you know what dot su is, Big Pod? Su, actually no. Well, uh, it it holds some context for both you and I because dot su stands for Soviet Union. Oh yeah. And you know what happened six weeks after that the dot su domain became official? What? Well, the Soviet Union broke up. <laughs> <laughs> and there is probably so, uh, also one that means a whole lot more to me, or or like historically means more to me, is the actually don't actually the probably has about the same lifetime of it. maybe a bit longer. The dot Y U domain. <laughs> the Yugoslavia domain. <laughs> yep. Actually that one actually had a lot longer. I just remember I had a lot longer uh, lifetime because there was a Yugoslavia in one form or another for another like five years. So it had a quite nice runtime. Yeah, so uh, it's not like uh, they've had, they. this is the first time thing that they would have to figure out. That, uh, so uh, they're going to be working on, on figuring this out because uh, .io is very popular with startups and particularly uh cryptos uh crypto bros and and so on because yeah. you know uh dot io stands they joke that it stands for input output so it's nerd culture thing yeah so uh hopefully uh this can get figured out okay i'm just i'm reading the the story this this article has about the yugoslavia because it it mentions slovenia way too much than than you, I would think, would be normal. Um, <laughs> basically, you mean three times? <laughs> basically, yeah, uh, once would be enough in most cases. Basically, it went as far as breaking and entering, <laughs> because there was uh, because there was actually like a problem with uh, Yugosl- a name Yugoslavia, because. First, it fell apart, but certain countries still wanted to use the name Yugoslavia. So, people who actually had control of this stuff, because for some reason that's Slovenia, uh, were actually trying to get figure out who should own the domain. <laughs> and it was unofficial. And it was unofficially operated by Slovenian Academic and Research Network of Slovenia. <laughs> that, which of course uh repeatedly the, denied it's a moment yeah. in the original heist <laughs> uh and repeatedly denied uh a requ- a request by by those other yugoslavia countries uh for any new domains uh arnes as it's as it's uh known f- for far more and far nicer name uh, also now handles SE domain, so they're actually really good at this. Yeah, so, uh... What? <laughs> no, the, I'm, it's an I'm interesting story. I recommend a read. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a good read. I can... Uh, cr- credits to, uh... Who, who wrote this? Let's see, let's see. Uh, Gareth Edwards. Uh, definitely, definitely an amazing article. Yeah. And, uh, I do... It's linked in the description. Uh, make sure, make sure you give it a read. And then, uh, so, uh, Big Pod, we 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 made a couple changes uh, this week uh, to the show. Uh, we even got an email about it. Yeah, well, maybe about it, relating to it. But uh, we have an actual email now. Yeah, like an actual email. Uh, for yeah. you, the viewer, we it's no different. Nothing. It it, it it changes nothing for you. Actually, if, it does. It, if you already send us an email and you will send us a new one, you will see it will come from a different domain. Because before we were using our personal emails. Now we have a 
proper email bigpod at taxbase.com josh at taxbase.com and of course uh, your contact for us at contact at taxbase.com uh, uh, you should see it right below me right now something like that but of course uh, with, with this wonderful new fa- found new email <coughs> technology uh, a lot of people realize that uh, you and I tend to self host a lot of our a lot of our own internet solutions yeah. but uh we have decided to cheat on this uh and uh big pod we, you were showing me the magic and glory that is uh the aws webmail service <laughs> yes and magic and glory i never thought i would see an email client so bad <laughs> so so bad <laughs> um well it is made by aws so Whoever here knows AWS UI, the web web UI, knows that, yeah, they pro they are probably the ones that could make a bad web UI for an email. Yeah, so uh, it sent me on a search once again for an email client because uh, no, uh, we're not touching this uh, anytime soon, and uh, of course I I. It took a it took me a couple hours because you know Gen two life, uh, but i I'm back on. I'm back using Thunderbird. I was kind of just, you know, it's just like, ah, do I really need an email client these days? Whatever. Most of my stuff, is, <laughs> most of my stuff is just done like web browsers and and then whatever. then you met AWS Workmail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, you know, it's nice that you know uh, it exists and uh, it's a it's a functional email service that we don't have to fight through like people with because you know I still. Um, for my own personal email, I I actually run through Zoho, and I do have some frustration sending emails at times. I haven't had that with the AWS one yet. Yeah, so, I uh, haven't either. Like I, uh, all honesty, I'm using AWS uh, Workmail for my own personal email. That's why I recommended it. Although I do also hate that Workmail UI, and that was the thing that I mentioned right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you were telling me that hey you uh just be ready for a bad UI be ready for a bad UI Josh and I'm like eh, it can't be any worse than you know like uh their cloud management uh UI which you know is also pretty bad it's it turns bad. out that it turns out that uh, Linode had something going for him <laughs> yeah it also is like the point of cloud is that you would manage it via CLI like as minimal as possible like CLI and Possibly using something like Terraform or or Open Tofu or some other tool like that to literally just write a file and deploy the whole environment using that file. But for well, for noobs like me who still uses the web UI for personal stuff and for uh, tax base and for, ta- for things like this, yeah, it the the web UI. It is operational, but it's not great. Yeah, so uh, th- there, there's been some there's been some uh, go arounds with that. Now, uh, I just looked at the timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. No, uh, not that bad. But it's just like, man, twenty minute episode. <laughs> It's not twenty minute episode, so yeah, it's thirty minute episode. But at this point, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, I've also got some other exciting news. Really? Uh, yeah, I checked our Patreon, and uh, we've got we've still got one guy that's yeah. subscribed to us. Thank you, by the way. Yep, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Did 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 you uh, get that uh, premium feed generated for them yet? They should have it, and they should have it. Okay. They should be. I don't know if they're listening to it, but they should have it. Okay. Well, you're welcome. But hey, uh, the if you don't hit... mail me at bigpot at taxbase dot com, we're gonna get that sorted. Yeah. Make make sure to sound make it sound very angry. Yeah. Uh, that way he can fix it on the double because. Uh, with with this with this uh, wonderful SSL uh, shenanigans that we had to go through with the email, uh, uh, we, we also haven't got... actually told that story. So this is where I'm gonna have to be a bit uh, 
It's my fault. <laughs> I when, I when I was setting up Nginx, I didn't think about well, what it would do with the top level domain, no, top, top domain, so not top level domain, but the top domain of taxbase.com and www.taxbase.com, uh, which of course also point to the server, which, which the question is, why do they point to the server, uh, Mr. DNS admin? So uh, the reason why they're pointing to the server is because I kind of expected one of these days to somebody to not realize that uh, our podcast is hosted on show.tuckspace.com and not tuckspace.com. Okay, that makes sense. And because, you know, we mentioned tuckspace.com, that's pretty easy to remember, tuckspace.com, tuckspace.com. So uh, let's go to tuckspace.com. And I'm like, well, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to, like, enter the domain entries and point them to the proper place anyway. And I figured that uh, you'd kind of do that yourself but uh i'm certain that uh you know uh, this guy that sent us the email with uh saying that hey our website's not safe because safari says so <laughs> uh but, definitely got a bit of a chuckle out of some of the emails that i was sending but like, yeah, the problem is, is you didn't issue. tell me because <laughs> as some of you may know or probably all of you because all of you are uh into this stuff i guess ssl is tied to a to a specific host name, and it's nginx, and it's all its infinite wisdom. We decided not to do a proper redirect, which I would think would be normal. It decided to do a proxy and a rewrite, which means instead of instead of going to instead of redirecting to show dot show dot it went okay. It's show dot I want your data. Host host name is still tuxbase.com. What's the thing that cried about SSL? The browser, because host name is not the same. So what I did, I I created one new configuration for Nginx for tuxbase.com and tux, www.tuxbase.com, where I also created a proper certificate. So now now, now we're gonna have something else on taxpay.com and www.taxpay.com. Want to tell us about that? So, uh, because that email came in, it also got me thinking, we should probably have a tuxpay.com front page. You know, just to point people to all the right places. And I, and I know that there's a service that uh, all these wonderful YouTubers and Twitch streamers like to use called a Linktree. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not about to pay Linktree to redirect people to websites because apparently it's a paid service i think but why you know, would that be paid service it's literally a static web page a bit of a bit of uh, what would essentially be javascript to for a ui so you can create those link trees which you could also do with a yaml file if you really wanted to and what remains is then you generate a static, static, single static HTML, and host it on S3 for what is essentially less than a cent plus of plus outgoing, uh, outgoing fees. Which by that point you can put it on R2 and be, have it for free. Yeah. So uh, I figure Completely. big pod, big pod. We have an Nginx server. Yeah. Why don't we just make one ourselves? So I did that in like. 15 minutes. You found a template, you mean? Yeah, I found a template and I modified the template. Nice. So, uh, if you go to tuxbase.com, uh, you will or find... www.tuxbase.com. Or that. Uh, you'll find this neat little uh, page that, you know, links to, obviously, our podcast. Because, you know, I want people to watch, find our shows. Yeah. But it also links to a Git... Our uh, Git... Git uh, what, do, what do they call it? The GitHub group GitHub, uh, either way yeah GitHub group yeah that we collect or our organization that's what it is so uh i've got a link to that where you can find uh the various repositories of where you can find like our templates stuff like that uh maybe some maybe some of our infrastructure <laughs> code or even you know like the source code for that uh, link tr link tree that page that uh i found and uh, i do need to write out a readme for that because i did fork it off of somebody else so I uh, I need to at least uh put put the credits where the credits would be due. Yeah. But anyways, 
uh, we're going to have that posted up probably maybe by the time that this comes around. I just dropped the file in and then just point point engine next to point to it. Uh, so it shouldn't, all, shouldn't be too much work. I hope. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you can follow us there. It also linked to our various YouTube, YouTube channels. I don't have... I don't have a setup to link directly to our Mastodon instances because, you know, you click on these links that are showing up on your screen right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, they're not really links, but they're, co- but they're codes that you can put into your federated enabled service. So your Mastodon, your threads. They're essentially the internal names that, you know, like you have on Twitter, you have at somebody. Here you have at somebody at this instance. Yeah. Because it's and not you can federated. Follow- yeah, and you can follow us uh, basically wherever we go. Yeah, because uh, we can also implement, uh, export our profiles and put them on other instances. And you know, one of these days we might have a Tuxpace dot community. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we also have YouTube channels, which you can find on the link tree. Uh, that are that are going to uh, maybe I is there a link page for the YouTube? I don't know. You, you Did you put you the link, the put the page for the for I, I, our I know channel. I put them in the link tree, but I don't know if you I don't know if you have the, a wonderful image that's showing up over our faces with the YouTube links. Actually, no. Okay. Uh, well. uh, uh, not our YouTube links or our podcast YouTube link because you know where you are if you're seeing the links. But uh, our YouTubes are in the description and the uh, notes, podcast notes. Yeah, well, you know, I don't watch the video version of my own podcast very often. I get it. I I, I do. <laughs> so it's just like, wait a second. I don't actually know the answer to this. <laughs> he does the he does the audio check. I do the video check. <laughs> but anyways, of course, if you want to shout at us, send us the angry send us the angry email in, to an actual email address that runs on an email service that actually functions for once. Yeah. <laughs> and uh of course we do have the discord community where you can hang out with uh various other listeners it's it's we're we're still a small group so uh it's not super active and you can always uh give us a couple dollars on the patreon in the meantime guys i think that's gonna be a wrap-up for us for this week yeah not quite not quite the long episodes that uh you, you know we typically post but hey better than nothing we'll see you goodbye